This is a Sports Catastrophe production. Hey there, how there, hello there. It's Jeff Cutter Diamond welcoming you to another Sports Catastrophe birthday boy. And the birthday boy for today, December 19th, is a Boston Celtic legend. No, not that one. No, not that one either. No, not that one. Not that one. He was known as Minnesota's Mr. Basketball. Attended the University of Minnesota, helped him out decently. He was actually the third pick in the 1980. NBA dropped by the Celtics, who used some keenness to get that pick in the first place. He was a bench player backing up Cedric Maxwell and Larry Bird, but got his chance to start for the Celtics once McHale was, well, Ma once Maxwell was traded. So this guy with Bird and Robert Parrish would be the best friend court trio in NBA history. He won three NBA titles with the Celtics, and he was, at different times, a TV analyst, GM, and even a head coach. He now works as an on-air analyst for NBA TV and for NBA on TNT, the, the studio show with Ernie Johnson, Shaq, and Charles Barkley. He is Kevin McHale, who will turn 65 today. So he's a senior citizen. Well, a Canadian standards from that. Kevin McHale was from Minnesota. He was a key power forward for the University of Minnesota's basketball teams from 76 to 1980, doing pretty well. He's still second in points and rebounds in Minnesota history. Kind of sad, don't you think? He was named the top player in University of Minnesota basketball history. Like, who else was that good? Anyway. Anyway. So, he did his job. So, it's the 1980 NBA draft. Now, if you remember this draft, this was the one that the Celtics and Warriors made that big one that seemingly a decent trade, but it turned out to be one-sided at the butt end of it. So here's how it went out. The Celtics had the number one pick. The Golden State Warriors had the number three pick in the draft. Boston decided to make a pre-trade, draft trade. Red Auerbach dealt the number one pick and a first, an additional first-round pick to Golden State for the rights to Robert Parrish, who was languishing in Golden State, and the third pick in the draft. That was one of the most shocking moves ever. The Warriors took with the number one pick, Joe Barry Carroll, who was his consensus college basketball star from Purdue. With the 13th pick that the Celtics gave up, it was Ricky Brown that went to um, Golden State. So, anyhow, that trade made Warriors fans rue the day of that move because not only did Auerbach get Kevin McHale with the pick, it was amazing. I mean, Red Auerbach. You know, got Robert Parrish, who was a cornerstone of the big three, as I said, with Bird and per uh, McHale. And, you know, the Go Warriors were stuck with Joel Barry Carroll, who basically left the Warriors in the middle of his career to go play in Italy for a few years. Win an Italian League championship, and then come back to the NBA and become a bum. So, yeah, that was huge. McHale actually held out for a large contract, threatening to play in Italy before the Celtics finally gave him a three-year deal. McHale subsequently would have to back up Cedric Cornbread Maxwell at forward. But he was named to the all-rookie first team, despite the fact he wasn't really a starter. Boston helped McHale out in his rookie season by winning 62 games. And shockingly, got to the 1981 finals, even though they were down 3-1 to the Sixers in the conference finals. McHale, in Game 6, in Philadelphia, actually made a key block with 20 seconds left to help him win the game. Boston would then take down the, Cel the Rockets in six games to capture the title. So, Boston did what they could do. It was amazing. McHale's rookie campaign, he got a title. Anyway, the Celtics, tried as they might, did everything. McHale's contract expired, actually expired in 1983, and the Knicks signed him to an offer sheet. So that meant that the Knicks could potentially get McHale.
But our back signed three of the Knicks' top free agent, agent players to offer sheets. The Knicks decided to sign their players and say, you know what, screw it. We don't need Mikhail. So our backs, Keenness got Mikhail and all that. He got a million dollars per year, despite the fact he was coming off the bench. Anyway, he helped the Celtics out in 1984 winning that title over the Lakers. It was a tight game. Tight series. Mikhail is memor memorable in that series for the hard foul to Kurt Rambis in Game 4 and a touched up a bench-clearing scuffle. Boston would come back from behind, force overtime, win that game, and it was 2-2, and then the Celtics won Game 7 on home turf. Mikhail would put up 56 points for the Celtics one game against the Pistons in March of 1985 after Ma Maxwell was injured. Anyway, nine days later, Bird would actually put up 60 points against the Atlanta Hawks. But anyway, it didn't matter. Mikhail was still decent. He put up 26 points per game in the NBA Finals against the Lakers. But sadly, though, the Lakers took him out in Game 6, finally being the Celtics in a series. Well, anyway, the 86 Celtics were huge in all that, and Mikhail was part of it. Well, the Celtics picking up Phil Walton from the Clippers, who was actually not as healthy as he would be. They traded away Cedric Maxwell to complete the trade, which meant that Mikhail could be a starter and Walton could come off the bench. And Mikhail did pretty well for himself, put up 21.3 points per game as a starter. He helped Bird, Parrish, Dennis Johnson, and Danny Ainge become better. And they won 67 games. Including the, they went 15 and 3 in the playoffs and did pretty well for themselves. They only lost one game on home turf, including the playoffs, and that was Portland, December 1985. The Lakers would be the next team to beat them, but that was a year after the loss to Portland. Anyway, Boston won a row. They started out 41 and 9. Mikhail, unfortunately, was injured. But, thankfully, he was in helping time in the playoffs, which was bad news for their opponents. Mikhail looked pretty good. Anyway. You know, he still did pretty well for himself. Finished fourth in the MVP behind Magic Johnson, Matt, Michael Jordan, and Larry Bird. So anyway, Mikhail looked good. Unfortunately, though, in March of 87, he broke a bone in his right foot. He continued to play through the injury, and that wasn't really good and all that. The Celtics had problems and couldn't win the 87 NBA Finals, even though they tried. I mean, the Celtics were hurt. Mikhail's injury, then Parrish had his sprained ankles, Ainge had a leg injury, and Walton had a broken foot. Mikhail had to miss the first month because of the surgery on his right foot. Anyway, the Celtics and Kevin McHale would do pretty well for themselves. McHale would have to take a, a, a big role for the Celtics with Larry Bird injured for all but six games and all that. Mikhail looked pretty good and all that. And he did his job. Mikhail was put back as a sixth man by the Celtics coach Jimmy Rogers with Ed Pitney, future Raptor, taking his role in the starting lineup. But it didn't work out. And then Mikhail was finally put back in the starting lineup and he helped the Celtics with an 18 and 5 stretch down the middle. It was all that. Jimmy Rogers would then be fired because of their playoff disappointment. And McHale wanted to retire because of his right ankle surgery. But he came back. Unfortunately, McHale would be injured. The Celtics tried their best, but they got they got to the conference semis, but couldn't do it. The Celtics were shocked by Cleveland in the conference semis in 92. 
Bird would retire. Mikhail, in his last year for 93, was hampered by injuries. But, you know, the Celtics had problems. McHale had to step up for the Celtics after Larry Bird retired, and Reggie Lewis had that collapse on the court in Game 1 that actually led to, led to him eventually dying of a fatal heart condition in the offseason. McHale would retire after the 93 series for Charlotte. So it was huge. The big three with Bird, Parrish, and McHale... Bird and McHale never played for a team other than the Celtics, and Parrish didn't play, well, Parrish did play after the Celtics for Chicago and Charlotte. McHale went to seven NBA All-Star games. He still looks pretty good and all that. The Celtics retired his number 32 in 94. It was named to the 50th and 75th anniversary NBA teams. In his career, 971 games played. Not a whole lot of them starters. He was basically off the bench for the near the end of his career. He still averaged 17.9 points per game, 1.7 assists, and 7.3 rebounds per game. In the playoffs, 169 games for them, only doing 85 off the bench, 18.8 points per game, 7.4 rebounds per game, but three times in 81, 84, 86. But as a retirement, after retirement, he joined the Timberwolves as a TV analyst and special assistant. He was made assistant GM in 94. By the Timberwolves, although he got, got to broadcast Timberwolves games as well. He was VP of Basketball Operations slash General Manager in 95. So he hired Flip Saunders, who was a teammate of him at the Golden, with the Golden Gophers, to be the coach of the Timberwolves. And McHale shocked a lot of people by saying, by saying Kevin Garnett to, like, to select him with the fifth pick in the 95 NBA draft, even though he never went to college. So, anyway, you know, Minnesota was actually stripped of three of five first-round picks because of their secret deal with Joe Smith and all that. McHale was head coach for the end of the 2005 season, being 19 and 12, but didn't want to be head coach, so Dwayne Casey took over. McHale would then fire him January 20, 2007, with Randy Whitman being the new guy. McHale decided to trade Kevin Garnett to the Celtics. And all that. Yep, he traded Garnett to the Celtics for five players and two first round picks. And the Celtics were contenders. And so Garnett won the title in 2008 and then said, anything is possible. That trade was terrible. The Timberwolves got tired of McHale and sent him to a hit, made him hit the bricks in 2009. So McHale would be the head coach more permanently. And he was replaced by Kurt Rambis. However, the Rockets found potential and resigned him in 2011 to be the head coach. Unfortunately, though, despite leading the Rockets to the conference finals in 2015, he couldn't recapture the magic to start the 2016 season and was canned. The funny thing is that six members of the 86 Celtics team have been searching a head coach. McHale, Larry Bird, Danny Ainge, Dennis Johnson, Sam Vincent, and Rick Carlisle. So, anyway, he would occasionally work for NBA and TNT, and after being canned by the Rockets, he signed a multi-year deal with Turner Sports. So he does his job. Mikhail and his wife had five children. Unfortunately, one of them was dead of lupus. So Mikhail actually was on Cheers twice. In 1990, in the episode Cheers Falls Out, in 1991, where have all the floorboards gone? As a head coach for Minnesota and Houston, he was 232 and 185 in the regular season. In the playoffs, he was 13 and 16. Got Houston to the 2015 Conference Finals before the 
warriors. They start their dynasty, if you will. Wreck them. But yeah, Kevin McHale's an interesting guy. And Boston loyalty. Anyway, I'm just I'm gonna do.